welcome to Lulu's Way. I'm really glad you're here. Right now, it's Thursday morning. I've been home for a couple of days. Um, it's really nice to be home. Although, this morning, I just woke up to a blanket of snow outside. <laughs> and I'm imagining the beach that I left. Uh, <laughs> um, then I thought, maybe I left too soon. And then I thought, nope, I left right on time. I left right on time. I might, not, I might not know the reason why I left right on time, but I left right on time. Because when you make decisions, um, sometimes it's not certain where the driving force to that decision comes from. And with the idea that it comes from the universe, and that nothing happens by mistake, I believe that um, this is exactly where I should be right now. So that's why I'm here. Dandy blend. Time for dandy blend. The first sip of a nice hot beverage in the morning is wonderful. So I switched out my pendants. So the other diamond pendant I took with me. I don't want to take two with me. So I just pick one for my trip and I pick the smaller one. And uh, uh, let's just say I'm not worried about anything happening or anybody stealing it. I'm not worried about that. But uh, I don't need to tempt anybody <laughs> with a big rock <laughs> on my neck for three months. So I swapped it back out. It's my mother's ring. If you haven't seen the video that I did on my two diamond pendants and the stories behind it, just search in YouTube, Lulu's Way Jewelry, and you'll find it. So I'm just about to have my breakfast. I made a delicious breakfast this morning. Uh, it's um, strawberries and grapefruit. Um, and an omelet with quinoa and chives. It's just so good. Mm. These are the same strawberries I bought in Whole Foods in Florida. And they've been in my cooler for four days. Now they're in my fridge. They're still fresh. They're still fresh. I'm telling ya. Mmm. I haven't had grapefruit for a long time. Boy, that's good. So let's see how this omelet is. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. So... I weighed in yesterday morning. I haven't weighed out. I, now, if, you, if you've known me long enough, you know I weigh in once a month. You know I follow a food plan to the letter, and I weigh in once a month. Um, so I haven't weighed in for three months. Um, I like to weigh in once a month because I like to catch, if I'm up a pound or if I'm up a couple and I go out of my ideal range, I like to bring it back down. But there was no way for me to check. So I didn't check um, if that was the plan. So I was up six pounds. <laughs> six. I knew. I, I said I felt like my weight was up a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what the story is. It's not because I ate off my food plan because I did not do that. My food plan sustains the lifestyle that I live. The lifestyle that I was living in this camper van for three months is not my lifestyle. I'm not a sedentary person, but I spent a lot of time sedentary. So it was too much food. Now, isn't it interesting? I didn't eat potato chips. I didn't go out for ice creams. I didn't go out for cocktails. I didn't eat French fries and Burger King and, uh, and McDonald's. And I didn't eat any of that. I followed my food plan. 
still was I was I was up six so um, it's very simple I'm not even like oh no what do I do now what if, what have I done what have I done I followed my food plan without exception and I don't make changes until I check my weight under the same exact conditions that I weigh every month which is first thing in the morning totally naked right after I pee before I eat or drink anything it's always the same exact circumstances and I wasn't going to get that in Florida anywhere so and it's in the same exact scale so because um, they all differ so uh, so I've just made my modifications I have my modifications I don't feel like something's been taken from me I feel like something's been given to me and it's the uh, the opportunity in the journey to get back into my ideal range which will probably happen in a month or two all my clothes still fit me fine um, I would say like probably my jeans feel a little snug but they still zip but I'm on it I'm on it like I said when I when I stand on the scale it's not about am I good or am I bad it's just a means of information for me that tells me what I need to do next do I need to eat more food do I need to eat less food or do I need to eat the same food it's the only question I need answered right there mm. this is so good So I started my tap dancing yesterday. Oh, that's not easy. Um, I have to really, really break it down into little bits and um, really practice it. But I found uh, a board in my garage to use as my dance floor, dusted off the tap shoes, and there I went. And oh, I just love that sound. I love the sound of that. <laughs> so. I'm just gonna keep at it and you know it's only the first little little teeny part that I'm trying to memorize and it's before the the, the lyrics even start it's the beginning it's the beginning uh, music before the lyrics start and it's the it's it's the steps to that and um, I probably spent 45 minutes yesterday working on that little bit um, and I can and I've got it memorized but I can't do it fast I can't do it to the music I can't can't do it to the music yet I can just still just do it slow you know it's journey it's a journey and I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy it I'm gonna enjoy the journey I don't want to do anything I don't enjoy hmm. I've been sleeping in my great big bed I admit it feels like a treat uh, I never I, I slept really great in the van little skinny skinny narrow bed um, not much room but cozy um, I got this room to sprawl that feels good too I'm enjoying it so I had my plumber here yesterday I needed a few things fixed um, my toilet in my bedroom was having some problems making some noise after it flushed it was running and making noise and stuff and he said the whole unit inside the tank needed to be replaced so he replaced all that and um, uh, and then um, I'm gonna get a new kitchen faucet um, the old one it's really funny it's like have you ever had this problem it feels like it's either hot or cold like you can't really get that sweet spot like when you want to just wash your hands and put it on warm so you kind of keep that lever up in the center 
but it seems like there's just one little tiny 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 spot that would be the right temperature and it's so hard to get if it's a little bit off it's too hot a little bit this way it's too cold and uh, it's just a weird faucet and um, he thinks it's the faucet so I'm gonna go get a new faucet and call him when it's when I have it and he'll put it in for me then I told him when I got back from my trip I took my first shower and the water was kind of spraying every which way and I said I think I need a new shower head so he said well before you get a new shower head try to clean each of the holes uh, he said just find like a little pick or a little needle or something to go into each one and kind of scrape off any any um, buildup of deposits or water minerals or whatever so I had a great idea I used like my little toothpick that has a little brush and I went in each hole and I and I poked each hole in the shower head turn on the shower comes out perfect so that was good I like that I also had a refrigerator repairman come yesterday because the water dispenser on my refrigerator is um, act coming out real 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 slow and then sometimes it doesn't shut off you have to jiggle it to make it shut off then there's like water dripping down so he diagnosed the part that needs to be replaced um, just a little plastic piece that broke behind the behind the lever thing so he ordered that and he'll come back and put that in so getting her done getting her done I'm doing the adulting stuff but this is the stuff that comes with um, owning a home it's just the way it goes as long as I have family members living with me I will keep this house if I ever find myself empty, I will sell. I think. I do love my house. I built it, uh, designed it and built it 30 years ago. No, I didn't build it myself. I had it built. It's a lovely neighborhood. And um, I don't know if I'd sell. So, about the meetup coming up th this June. If you don't know about it, watch my video um, that I made about maybe five videos ago. It talks about the meetup in Massachusetts. You can give that a watch. Um, all the details of it are on Facebook under the events tab in the Lulu's Way Women's Meetup group. So, I just want to make it clear that when it says tent site, because there's some tent sites available, just know like you don't have to have a tent. Like I get a tent spot and I just park my van on it because I've been there several times and there it's cool with them. Um, and I know you can park two cars on a, uh, on a site. You know from for out of state people, it's, it's a little pricey. Um, if you live in Massachusetts, it's $17 a night. If you are from out of state, it's 54 a night. That's a huge difference. Um, but you can park two vehicles on a lot. Um, I didn't know how to begin to organize such a thing and I just didn't want to get involved in that especially um, matching people up and figuring out how everyone's going to pay each other and personalities and is it going to work out and um, uh, um, getting you know registering the person's license plate with the campground I just removed myself from that so if you have a site and you would like to share it and uh, have somebody pay half half of it, um, 
make a post on Facebook and offer it. The way I see it working is you just say, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to share my spot, share the expense of my spot, anybody interested. So those people that are not going because they can't afford it may say, oh, I will. And then maybe you could do like uh, uh, a Facebook video chat and just kind of get a feel and get to know the person to see if you want to share a site with them. And then if you do, then just get the make and model, um, the make and model and license plate of their vehicle and just add it to your reservation. I don't know if you can add it to your reservation online. You might have to wait till the office opens on May 9th, but that's an option, you know, to make it more affordable. The juiciest grapefruit. Oh my God, so good. So good. I, I got a tip once on picking out citrus. It's the best tip I ever got. When you're gonna pick out a grapefruit out of a bunch, you're gonna pick out an orange or a lemon. You pick them up and you compare the weight of them. So the heavier they are, the juicier they are. If they're lighter, they're drier. So I just kept picking up, picking up and comparing the weight of each grapefruit. And I found what I felt was the heaviest one. Took that, then I did the same thing again to buy two. You can do it with lemons, you'll see. Some of them are light, some of them are heavy. The heavy ones are the juicy ones. It's true save you from buy, spending money on uh, citrus and you open it up and it's dry. That's not delicious. So I want to I want to start to plan meetups for the whole summer over New England over New England in campgrounds. This is the time to do it while they're all not booked because you find a you find a, a, a three day period that there's the place is almost empty still. Um, I can put that out there, and then people can we can fill it up with us Lulu's Way campers. Um, so as the time marches on, they're going to start to fill up. So maybe instead of eighty sites available, there'll be thirty or ten, whatever. Why am I not booking up the whole summer right now? It would make perfect sense. I All I have to do is find some state parks in each state, book myself a site, put it on an event, and then everyone just books up if they wanna come. I guess because I've never done it like this, I've never had a meetup with like a large crowd with activities in a campground. I've had it in Florida that was a big huge group site and we had a pavilion so we had a meeting spot for all these people 75 people like I don't know if I can fit 75 people on a site if I've never been there like I don't know where are we gonna where are we gonna meet you know um, to be together um, all those unknown things I almost feel like I want to experience it this first time uh, in June see how it goes, work out the kinks, and then plan them. Um, and instead of having them all booked and being like, oh my God, this doesn't work, you know? So um, I'm just being apprehensive about it. And so um, I think what's gonna happen as time marches on, I get to you know, at least talk to the campground. Like I, I'm right now, I'm so unknown about it all because um, I've never done this at this campground before and uh, I'm not really aware of the um, the common areas that we could congregate so um, May 9th the season opens that's when I get to actually talk to somebody I get to go and actually be there and s see what I want to see um, so that I can decide how well it's going to work and what I have to do to make it work uh, on my end as far as activities and stuff. So I'm holding off, I'm holding off. So by holding off, uh, when I do plan, if I do plan more, 
um, like this, um, they just, you know, they, they won't, maybe there won't be 80 spaces available. There'll be less, and, and that's okay. And then I'll know for next year exactly what to do. So next week I'm going to see Bill up in at um, Pilgrim Van Builds. He's the gentleman that put in my solar panels, my um, Max Air fan. He removed my passenger seat and he put in my DC to DC charger. The DC to DC charger needs a little attention. Um, I think it's likely just settings, but um, there's just something a little funky going on. But it, I'm not complaining about it because it kept me on 100%. Between that and the bright sunshine, the first half of my trip was bright sunshine. Never even the DC to DC charger didn't even have to go on. Um, but the second half of it was rainy and gloomy, um, so I had the the DC to DC charger running, and it, it, it I was at a hundred the whole way home. It's just such a gift when I think about my trip to Arizona, how much I struggled. I struggled trying to get electricity, so it's been a game changer. But it needs some tweaks. Another thing I'm thinking of doing is getting a, um, a trailer hitch installed on the back of my van and putting in one of those swing arm cargo shelves that I can swing open so I can get my back doors open but have a great big huge storage area because you know my van is tiny when I'm going to be gone for three months um, I have everything I need in there it's jam-packed but it's uh, everything has a spot there's a few more things I would like to take and it's not an option and I thought if I had some a bigger van or more storage I could uh, take these things that I'd like to take um, among other things the two biggest things that I'd like to take is I'd like to take a tap dance floor and um, just a little board that I can tap dance on. Um, also, I'd like to take a lounge chair. I'd rather, I'd like to have a lounge chair for the beach rather than just a sit-up chair. I'd like to be able to lounge. So, uh, I, I have no place to put either one of those things. So, I'm going to look into that. Um, tomorrow I'm getting an oil change and I'll talk to my mechanic about um, the hitch and installing a hitch. And then, um, then I'll shop for my swing arm hitch thing um, and the carrier. I think I'm not going to do that. I'm kind of thinking. I can take the box off and the swing arm off whenever I'm home so that my van fits in the garage. Um, and my van is so tiny that I'm still going to fit good in the parking space even with that additional few feet um, and I think that those swing arms they swing out really with ease I don't think they're a big deal I think you just kind of push a button and just swing it and then you can just swing it and keep it swung out the whole day and just have access to the back that's my thought anyway is there anybody here that has one that can give me any tips on that um, I'd appreciate it. It was so nice to see my people again. It was nice to see my cat again. She kept running away from me. I think she was freaked out. 
it was kind of like, I know you, but you look different because I, I got such a tan. And uh, I think she was a little pissed off at me, too, for leaving for so long. So she was just like, yeah, screw you. And off she went. <laughs> now I'm in her good graces again. So today I have to make a few phone calls. I need to call a lawn, a lawn service. Um, I want some, but, huh. I mean, right now there's a blanket of snow on my, I woke up to a blanket of snow on my grass. <laughs> I mean, I know it will be gone. Next week's going to be 60s all week. So I look forward to that. But I want, before any of this crabgrass starts growing and any weeds start growing, I want to get on it. So I'm going to call a landscaper that will come and, you know, fertilize and weed control. And um, last summer I had some grubs out in the front yard. Um, actually, the year before that I had grubs. And then I put down the Grubex stuff. And then the next year I had much less, but it was still there. So I think I just want to have it professionally done. Um, and I'm hoping to just have like no crabgrass, no weeds and no grubs this year. Um, and it's so funny, even with the weeds and with the, uh, with, the, with the grubs, the lawn always looks beautiful. It's a, just a nice green, lush looking lawn that I have. But um, that's, it looks like that when it's first mowed, when all the weeds are level with the grass. <laughs> but once the, once the crabgrass starts and stuff, So I'm going to make that phone call today. I'm going to call my landscaper guy. Um, there's a few projects I want done in the yard. Some some mulching, um, and some want my all my shrubs trimmed, and I want um, a spring cleanup. You know. So I'm managing okay with less food. I started my less food yesterday. And uh, it's noticeably less. But it's manageable. And I'm just fine. Mmm. That was so good. So good. The fruit was so sweet and juicy, and the omelet was um, really, it had a lot of substance to it because it had the grains in it. So it was nice and heavy and satiating. So I'm really happy about that. I'm also going to go to Lowe's today and pick out a new kitchen faucet. So it's storming and snowing, but I drive in anything. I'm from New England. A snowstorm doesn't stop me. Even if it was a foot of snow, I still go. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to drive in big cities because I've done it all my life working in downtown Boston. Um, rush hour traffic, switching lanes, little the crazy maze of a big city, no problem. Snow, I was always the one at work. Everybody was calling in when it would be too much snow because they were afraid to drive. I would be the one showing up, always the one showing up. I just know how to drive in it. Gotta just take it slow, slow and sure. And I've never, ha I've never had an accident because of snow. I don't think I've ever had an accident, have I? Little fender benders. But never in the snow. So I'm looking forward to next week when the weather's nice. I'm going to get sweet pea all re ready. My vintage trailer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go into YouTube and search Lulu's Way Vintage Trailer and you'll see two videos. One is the story of sweet pea and 
the other one is a tour of Sweet Pea. It'll be fun to get that set up again. And La Casita. Can't forget La Casita, my screen house out there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search Lulu's Way. Screen house or La Casita. I think, I, I think either one of those are in the title. So, um, yeah, and check it out. It's a little tour of La Casita. So I am happy to be home. It feels really nice to be home. I love my home, but I'd be lying if I said I'm not thinking about the beach and wondering if I left too early. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> but I know I didn't leave too early because everything happens right on time. So bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>